Hey guys, Dan and O'Neill Brothers here, and I'm doing another tech video to show you a common problem that we see with customers buying brand new engines with us. It's a very easy fix, and something that people overlook really quick because they get real excited, they want to drop a motor in right away and get it running, but these little things go a long way, and that's setting your trim and EPA correctly on your, on your carburetor, from your servo to your carburetor. That link has a lot to do with the way your engine's gonna respond, how it's gonna start. So it's real crucial that you take the time to set this. So I got the truck out today. She's a little dirty, but you know, I just got back from racing. But you know what? It's all right, man. Here at O'Neill Brothers, we like it a little bit dirty. So uh, I'm gonna show you how to set, set the throttle trim and linkage on your low C5. I also have an HBI down here. I'm going to show you that a little bit later, but first, I want to take you over to my workbench. I want to show you how these carburetors actually work. You get a little bit more knowledge, you'll understand this more, and um, it'll be easier and you have a better experience with our product. So let's go ahead and cut over to the workbench. I'm going to tell you a little bit about these carburetors. All right, guys, we're over here at the bench, and I got myself a brand new WT990 to demonstrate what the problem really is and how this carb actually works. So the WT990 is really no different than any other WT style carb. It has a throttle shaft that goes through, a butterfly in the center, this uh, what we call a, a throttle cam uh, off to the side, and then your very famous throttle hammer, okay? And we're gonna talk a lot about this throttle hammer today because this is the problem that we're having. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring you guys down here real quick. And we're going to talk a little bit about this throttle hammer and butterfly. So these carburetors, they have a high and low needle. Now your low needle more works as like a pilot jet. So as soon as the engine starts, it's dumping the same amount of fuel, just like any kind of barrel carb on a dirt bike or Banshee or anything like that. Um, and then your throttle hammer right here controls how much air comes into the engine at idle with, with no gas. So the problem that people have is when they put on their, their carburetors, they, when they don't set their linkage correctly, especially on the reed engines, what happens is this throttle hammer is actually cracked open, kind of like that, all right? And so what's happening on the inside is that you're allowing too much air to come into the engine and it's not choking the engine enough to pull gas in to get the engine started. It's a very easy, very easy fix. But I want to show you a little bit more. Now, down here, you have your idle screw. And it has at the end of it, it's tapered. See, you can get that in the video. And as, this, as you screw this taper, as you screw this in, what it does is it pushes against the back side. Let's see if I can get that in the camera. It rests right on, the, right on that throttle hammer right there. Since that is tapered, I'm trying to give you guys the best angle possible here. As you screw it in, it slowly opens this, this throttle shaft, allowing a little bit more air to come in. Now, when I first showed you, it was all the way closed. That means the idle screw was all the way open. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just turn her all the way in, and you can see that there's only a little crack on that butterfly, and that's actually a lot. So you can imagine when, you're thro when you don't set your throttle linkage right and it's open that far. That's almost double the air coming in than the gas. So you're gonna throw off it being able to start. This idle screw is extremely important and, and also your throttle, your throttle trim and hammer and being in the right place is, the, you know, is very crucial as well. Now this throttle hammer works both ways. It rests right here on the, on the idle screw mixture, but it also stops right there. And so it, it really limits how far your butterfly can actually travel. So when the throttle hammer is all the way down, your butterfly is horizontal. And setting your EPA right here is crucial. A lot of guys get these bearing mod carbs, which are nice, but if you set your EPA correctly, where you're not overthrowing your servo and pushing on this and creating a lot of pressure on the throttle shaft here, 
these, these carburetors will last a lot longer without having to do a bunch of mods. So I'm gonna show you how to find this problem over there on the build bench and how to correct this problem. So hopefully this helped you guys understand a little bit about throttle, uh, throttle hammers and the way your idle mixture screw or uh, your idle screw works and how your throttle shaft and butterfly work all together. So let's go ahead and cut back over there and I'm gonna show you guys how to find the problem, how to fix the problem, and then from there we're gonna show you on a different car how to do it. All right. All right guys, we're back over here on the build bench. We got big, dirty, nasty, we're calling it right now. And I guys, I want you to imagine, hey man, you just bought a bitchin' brand new Signature Series Reed case engine from us. You're all excited, you put it in your car, you hook it all up, you set the carb tuning exactly where I tell you in my tuning video, and you go to try to start it, it doesn't start. And you're frustrated, you spent all this money and you got a motor, it doesn't start. Well, let me show you what more, probably what the issue is. So let's go ahead and drop back in here, and I'm going to show you what the problem is right here. I went ahead and recreated it for you. So we're going to be looking right here at the throttle hammer, okay? And I got my my Lynx 4S from um, from High Tech. I love this radio. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the brake, and I want you to watch this throttle hammer move backwards. See how it moves back like that? So that's telling me right now that my linkage is not set correctly. And this is a common problem whenever somebody drops in a brand new engine, or really any engine at all. It could be a used engine that you got from a buddy, or even the same engine, same type of engine that you put in. You should always check this. This should be one of your first things to check. This is gonna set everything off. No matter what you do to these two needles, if this is like this, and you hit the brake and you see it move backwards, it's not gonna work. And this goes for any car. It doesn't matter if it's a low C, HBI, Roven, uh, Red Cat, MCD, FG, it doesn't matter. If you see this, that's the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I set my linkages on here. I'm going to show you my radio and I'm going to show you how to fix this very easy problem. It only takes a couple minutes and then you're ready to go. So let's go ahead. I'm going to flip the car around. So you guys can get a good look at my servo setup here. Now like I said, I'm running the Lynx 4S, uh, Lynx 4S radio from High Tech. I love this radio. It's got a ton of options, more options than I really need to use. And I also use High Tech servos. I think uh, their electronics is one of the best on the market. I highly suggest them, and they have a great uh, customer service warranty program. So, anyways, let's go ahead and get into this. So, this is our throttle servo right here. As you notice on the low seat, it hooks up to the brakes right here. And uh, we got our we got a reed cage G320 in here that I've been racing for a little while now. Now I use the stock horn from High Tech. Uh, there's a lot of different horns out there you can choose from. I like using their stock stuff. I drill it out, do my own thing to it. But I'm going to show you how I start this whole process. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and take the horn off for you guys. So I can show you a little bit about centering. So what I want you to do pretty much your first step is pretty much get your engine in like this. Get the linkage on, get it sitting in its spot, and then have, and loosen up these collars right here. On a low C, they're 1.5. So just loosen them up. You don't need to take them off or anything. Just loosen them up so everything can sit freely. Now you'll notice how that sprung forward like that. See how that sprung forward? That's the return spring on that throttle hammer I was telling you guys back, bringing this back to center, okay, which is great. So we leave this loose, but we're gonna talk a little bit about how to set your servo horn correctly. And this goes for a lot of different cars, okay? All right, so we're in the radio, and most good radios have something called a sub trim. So in this radio, it's called S trim. And if you see, you have steering, throttle, and then auxiliary one and two. We don't really mess with those. But we got TH, which means throttle. And you see how I have it set at zero. You want it set at zero, okay? That's really important when you start this process, all right? 
Um, you don't want this thing to be, you really don't want to sit here and trim the radio or have it anywhere there. So I want you guys to first go in your radio, go to zero. That's the first step, okay? So once we're there, we have our, our radio trim set. We're gonna go ahead and move over here. Now some horns, the splines on the servo and the splines in the horn, they can differ, you can, they can be a little bit different. So I have it set to where you wanna make sure, you wanna make sure that this horn, since it's pushing and pulling this way, you want it as flat as possible, going from the front of the car to the back, okay? So it gives you the most leverage. Now on this horn, it has a slight, it has a, a little bit of a slight um, pitch to it, but that's okay. It's pretty close. Um, I would be more concerned if it was more of an aggressive pitch, pitch at zero to try to get the horn on, but this is pretty, pretty damn straight, and that's pretty much what you want to do. You want to get as close as you can. Dead center would be great, but that's where I like to start. So then I'll go ahead and just put the put the screw back in. So now you know that your, your trim set at zero, you have a great base setting, and go ahead and lock down the servo horn so now we can play with it. Now from here it's pretty simple. You're going to move over here to these collars and look what I like to do is I actually like to put my, my finger and push the linkage forward just a little bit. You don't need to jam it. okay? And what that's doing is it's pushing this this throttle cam forward, which is pushing the the throttle hammer up against the idle screw. From here, I'll lock down this back collar first. Okay, and then that pretty much sets it in place. And then this is your another return spring. I'll go ahead and just put a little bit of tension on it. Just a little bit. So pretty much, see if I can get in the in the video. See how it's just touching? Just a little bit. You don't need a lot, lock it down. Now there's all like guys do all sorts of cool little spring deals here, kind of like this. I do my own. Um, you know, get creative. I tell guys all the time this is a hobby. Have fun with it, do cool stuff, do stuff you really like. And then we're going to move over here now. This pretty much to me is set, okay? It uh, looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and flip it around again. And we're going to show you the throttle hammer. Okay, so now, since we set our linkage here, now when we hit the brake, it doesn't move. No movement at all. You might get a little wiggle depending on how old the carb is, but no movement at all. You don't want that thing to move at all. Only forward, okay? Only forward. Now, I'm gonna show you about EPA. Now, this is another important thing. Really, when it comes to the longevity of your carburetor, wearing them out, or if you're on a twin carb engine where you have two carbs that are coupled and you have one side reacting, one side bringing it back. This is really important. This is called EPA, which is called endpoint adjustment. Trim is pretty much your offset from center. EPA is how far your throttle will throw itself. So there's a lot of guys that don't set this in their radio. They just, you know, pull it. So I'm going to show you in my radio, my bitchin' high tech Lynx 4S. And it's one of the first things that come are on the menu here. EPA. Now I have my EPA set. Um, I have my EPA set um, already. See, right now I have back 85, which is my brake, and I got 118, which actually I can adjust that. So what I want you to do is I want you to watch. What what I want you to do is watch the throttle hammer, and when it gets when it stops, that's where your EPA should stop. If you can pull more of the trigger, if you can pull more trigger past that on your radio, you have too much EPA. So all you gotta do is go into your radio, back off the EPA, and that's it. So pretty much you wanna, you wanna hold your radio, hold the throttle down, go real slow until you see it hit. Either back off or add if you need to. And then usually I'll see it click, 
I'll see it hit and then you know I like to back it off first I'll see it hit and then I'll go ahead and just give her maybe two more clicks past that so when you're sitting there actuating and you're racing you're not you're always going to get full throttle no matter what so that's pretty much how you set the you set the throttle trim uh, set your linkage and set your EPA on on a low C5T it's very simple but like I said this goes for any kind of car doesn't matter what car it is this needs to be done every time so let's go ahead and I'm gonna take this I'm gonna take this bad boy off the off the table I'm gonna throw an HBI up here real quick I'm gonna show you just on an HBI how it's done it's pretty simple it's about the same thing but let's go ahead and put this on the ground and I got an I got an old guy here this is one of our old sand cars it's been in a shit ton of our videos this thing's got speed built into it this is old shredhead car right here legendary car okay so you notice on an HBI the linkage is actually one full rod all the way back and then what I have what I like to call a sub rod okay now you have the same thing you have your throttle same way same hookup the whole deal only you're gonna go off one rod so in a nutshell what you're gonna do here let's go ahead and get this cage up and you can see this throttle same thing now with this since the linkage is moving from the front to the back you're gonna have the horn going straight across 90 degree as close as you can get it on zero trim from here you're gonna do the same thing but this is actually kind of nice all you got to do is loosen up these collars right here which most of them are 1.5s are as well and this works for roving cars okay and then this is pretty much gonna set itself so I like what I like to do just go ahead and push this forward keep it there with my finger lock up the front collar and then on HBI's I like to pull this one up just past that sub linkage right there so it doesn't bind and then lock that up and then your throttle set that's it I would say the HBI is actually a little bit easier to set the throttle trim because you're not dealing with two with the brakes either you're dealing with one shaft with a sub with the sub linkage and that's it I'm telling you guys this little trick this little three minute trick take a couple minutes take that breath and do that it's going to save you a lot of headaches and troubles I really hope this helped today. If you guys have any questions, you guys know where to call us. We've been here for a long time. Either email us, talk to Sean, or you can call the shop, talk to me personally, and we can help you out with this stuff. I got more tech videos coming. I also have, want to do a really bitchin' uh, version two um, tuning video called Advanced Tuning by Dan. Um, and we're gonna go over race tuning, drag race tuning, twin tuning, 46 tuning. Uh, and we're talking after break-in process. This is like when you guys are like, all right, I want to see this power. I want to squeeze it all out. So stay tuned. I got some more videos coming and then here in the next three to four weeks. And thanks, guys. Have a great day.